Have you ever tried comparing your pictures taken at different ages? You would observe that you have grown up when you compare the different pictures. Have you ever wondered how we grow? We all start life with a single cell. Let us find out how our body grows, develops, repairs itself and becomes an adult with trillions of cells. Cells increase in number by a process called cell division. Every day our bodies produce millions of skin cells to replace those lost in normal activity. New cells cover any wound in our body. There are two types of cells in living beings. The cells which help in growth are the vegetative cells. Recall how pollen and ovules fuse with each other in a process called fertilization. They are included in the second type of cells, the reproductive cells. In human beings, sperms and ova are the reproductive cells. When a cell is ready to undergo division, it has to go through a preparatory stage. This preparatory stage is called interface. There are three stages in interface. G1 or GAP1, S or synthesis and G2 or GAP2. G1 is the period in where all the organelles and cytoplasmic components are replicated. During the stage S, the chromosomes including the DNA begin to replicate. This results in two identical copies of chromosomes called sister chromatids. The two sister chromatids are attached to each other at a point called the centromere. During G2, organelles and other enzymes required for cell division are formed. The cells spend a great deal of time during interphase and very short period of time in actual division. There are two types of cell division, mitosis and meiosis. Generally, mitotic cell division takes place in vegetative cells and meiotic cell division takes place in reproductive cells. Mitosis consists of four phases, prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase. In a microscopic view, we can observe the nucleolus, chromatin network and centrioles in a cell. During prophase stage, the chromatin network changes to chromosomes. Nucleolus and nuclear membrane disappear. Chromosomes become visible appearing as two sister chromatids held together at the centromere. Cytoskeleton, dissembles and centrioles change to star-shaped structure called asters. Spindle fibers begin to form. Towards the end of prophase, the aster move towards the opposite pole of the cell. During metaphase, chromosomes are attached by spindle fibers in their centromere. Chromosomes are arranged at the center of the cell, which is called metaphase plate. Anaphase begins with the degradation of proteins that hold the sister chromatids together. Thus, chromosomes are divided and daughter chromosomes are formed. Daughter chromosomes are pulled to the opposite poles of the cell. This results in equal chromosomal numbers in both mother and daughter cells. Therefore, mitosis can be called equational cell division. At telophase, a furrow forms in the center of the cell. Nuclear membrane reappears around each set of chromosomes. Chromosomes cluster at the opposite poles. Nucleolus reappears and spindle apparatus dissembles. Thus, two daughter nuclei are formed. Finally, cytoplasm divides into two, resulting into two daughter cells. This process is called cytokinesis. Since plant cell walls cannot be constricted by actin fiber, vesicles form an expanding membrane partition called the cell plate. Similar to animal cells, finally divides into two daughter cells.
Do you know why offsprings are not identical to their parents? Let us find out the answer to this question with the process of meiosis that takes place in reproductive cells. Meiosis is the process by which haploid cells are produced from a diploid cell. Here, the chromosomes must be correctly sorted and distributed in a manner to create genetically unique cells with half the number of chromosomes as the original cells. For reduction in the number of chromosomes in the new haploid daughter cells, two rounds of divisions are necessary, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. As in mitosis, meiosis begins after a cell has successfully completed the G1, S and G2 stages of interphase. During S phase of the interphase, the DNA is replicated, producing two copies of each chromosome called sister chromatids. Meiosis 1 has four phases, namely prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1 and telophase 1. During prophase 1, centrioles change to star-shaped structure called asters and spindle fibers are formed. Sister chromatids remain attached at the centromere. Up to this point, the cell looks very similar to mitosis. But two events occur in meiosis that we do not see in mitosis. These two events lead to genetic diversity. During prophase 1, a homologous pair of sister chromatids, that is paternal and maternal chromatids, pair with each other forming a tetrad. Once this structure is formed, the second event called crossing over takes place. During crossing over, a physical exchange between chromosome segments of non-sister chromatids occur. This increases genetic diversity. Prophase 1 concludes when the duplicated centriole pairs move to opposite poles of the cell. As they move, the centrioles extend the spindle fibers forming the meiotic spindle. In metaphase 1, spindle fibers are completely formed and the sister chromatids are attached to the spindle fibers. Then the bivalents randomly align along the metaphase plate. Due to an independent assortment, this alignment is random and adds to genetic diversity. In anaphase 1, the homologous chromosomes are pulled to opposite poles of the cell. In between the two sets, interzonal fibers are formed. As the centromeres do not divide, the daughter cells will have only half the number of chromosomes. Hence, meiosis 1 is called reductional cell division. Meiosis 1 ends with telophase when the nucleolus and nuclear membrane reappear. Chromosomes again change chromatin network. Two daughter nuclei are formed. With the first nuclear division, the cytoplasm may or may not divide. Telophase 1 is succeeded by meiosis 2, which begins without further replication of DNA in the chromosomes. Meiosis 2 is further divided into prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2, and telophase 2. During prophase 1, centrioles again change to aster and spindle fibers are formed. Nucleolus and nuclear membrane disappear. Chromatin networks change to chromatids. In prophase 2, asters move to opposite poles of the cell. Sister chromatids are attached to the spindle fibers in the centromere. The spindle fibers align the sister chromatids along the metaphase plate. During anaphase 2, centromere of the chromosome divides. Sister chromatids are separated and pulled towards opposite sides. The entire process ends with telophase 2, as chromosomes again change to chromatin network. Nucleolus and nuclear membrane reappear. Again, Furrows separate the two daughter cells to four haploid daughter cells. The haploid daughter cells will specialize into gametes, either sperm or egg. 
these fuse in fertilization to form a zygote which will grow into a child the child receives half of its chromosome from its mother and half from its father as man and woman produce millions of gametes and selection of gametes in fertilization is random this contributes to genetic diversity hence a child is not identical to either parent now Can you state some of the differences between mitosis and meiosis? Mitosis usually occurs in vegetative cells and meiosis usually occurs in reproductive cells. In mitosis there is only one round of division but two rounds of divisions are necessary for meiosis. Mitosis results in two diploid daughter cells but meiosis results in four haploid daughter cells. Unlike mitosis, two homologous pairs of chromosomes pair with each other in meiosis. There is no physical exchange of any segment of chromosomes in mitosis, but in meiosis, physical exchange between chromosome segments of non-sister chromatids occur.